Welcome to Dr. Piercy's Creating a First Java Eclipse Project. By watching this video you will learn how to start an Eclipse project, you will learn how to add Java classes to your Eclipse project, and you'll learn how to run your Java project in Eclipse. For this lesson, we're going to create the simple Java application illustrated by this UML class diagram. In this diagram, you see two classes depicted. This means it will create two Java files, one for each of the classes. One is payment. This will simply hold a main method that will let us actually run the program. The more detailed class diagram is for the class called person. And you can see in this class diagram it will have three field level variables and then it will have several methods. Note that there will be more getters and setters than are listed in this diagram. These were just abbreviated for brevity. Please keep in mind that in this lesson we're really concentrating on how Eclipse can be used to create classes. We will save more detailed discussion of the actual Java code for later lessons. We'll start with Eclipse open and the basic perspective. To start a new project, recall that you go to File, Menu, and you choose the New option. Then you look for Java Project. Note that on mine it's listed here. If you do not see it, you can also go to Other. And in Other, you can search and browse until you find the type of thing that you're interested in creating. In this case, we're creating a basic Java project. Whether you went from the original menu or through the other dialog, you'll still get to the same page after I hit Next. Keep in mind that you generally want to review carefully and fill out carefully all of the dialogs when creating a new item in Eclipse because this will make sure that it's created right the first time. For this page, it's the simplest type of project, so we're going to simply type in the project name. We'll call it Employee Payment. And for the rest of the items on the page, we will accept their defaults. Quick look at the next page. Hit Next. We will see that we're going to have the Employee Payment project level and then below that in the hierarchy there will be a folder called source and this is where our Java classes are going to go. Once you accept this hit finish and your project is created. You can explore it over in the package explorer by expanding the project by just clicking on the arrow to the left. You'll notice that we have the source folder for our Java classes and our basic JRE system library. Recall that we're going to create two classes, a payment class and a person class. Since the person class is required in order for the payment class to do its thing, we're going to create the person class first. Also, most of the work is in the person class as we can see by this UML class diagram. We're going to start by creating the class, then we'll add the fields. Remember the focus is on how we do this in Eclipse and not necessarily the Java code, so I'm going to talk about Java things minimally and focus on Eclipse. When we created our employee payment project, we went to the File New menu option. Generally, I prefer when I'm creating new objects that go into or are contained within a project to basically start from the package explorer and right click on the folder where I intend to put the item that I'm going to create. In this way I get the benefit of the location automatically being placed into the dialog. So right click on the source folder and choose new and then from the list you should see class. If you do not see it here, go into Other and look, browse for the class item. 
Again, because we're creating something new, we see a dialogue form. Be sure to always look at everything on the form, check that it's what you want, and change those that need to be changed. In this case, I'm going to simply change the name of the class and call it person. I'm going to leave the modifier public. I right clicked on the source folder to make it where I'd like it to be. Note also that there is a message up here that use of the default package is discouraged. In general, it's better to create packages to store your items. Note, superclass, it inherits from the Java Lang object, which every class that you create in Java will inherit from. In this case, I do not need a main. That will be in the, uh, the other class that we'll create. And I can just take the defaults for everything else. Click Finish, and you'll see in just a moment that your class will appear in the Editor section of Eclipse. Now a Java class is probably the simplest thing that you can create in Eclipse. So the code that's generated based on the form that you fill out is very minimal. There's not much there. Simply the public class person, denoting this as a class. As you'll see, there are some very nice options that we can use in Eclipse to create this Java class very quickly. We must start, though, by identifying the fields that we will put. Let's take a quick look back at our UML class diagram to remind ourselves what we need to create. We're going to have first name, which is a string, last name field, also a string, and an hourly rate, which is double. And this will be the amount of payment that each person will be paid per hour worked. Back at Eclipse in the editor, we see that items typed into the editor are color-coded. Java keywords are kind of purple on my screen. Place the cursor inside the Java class. We'll start by declaring our first name string. So in general, to enter things into the Eclipse editor, place the cursor where you want it, and then start typing. You'll notice several things in the editor, such as underline. Underlines to give you warning. If it's yellow, it's generally a warning that say, hey, there may be some problem that's noticed by the editor. In this case, no real problem. I've declared this variable, but I've not yet written anything to use it. So it's warning me it may never be read. We'll fix that when we add methods. As I've added the second one, I'm going to pause for a moment just to show you how an error message appears in the editor. Notice that this is underlined. In this case, I've simply left off the semicolon. But if I put the cursor over the underlined in red item, an error message will appear. In this case, it tells me that a syntax error insert the semicolon to complete the field decoration. I do that, and you'll see that the error disappears. Let's enter the last one, which will be double, and it will be the hourly rate. Notice also that I am following Java naming conventions. A convention is a standard way for naming things that everybody in the profession will use, and it makes it easier for people who are used to Java to read your code, for you later to identify the difference between variables and classes, and many other things related to code generation. So stick to conventions as much as you can. This convention is known as camel case. The idea for variables is that you always start with a lowercase letter on the first word of the variable. If there are multiple words in your variable name, you will concatenate or bunch them up together. And then any successive word will start with an uppercase letter. For classes, we follow similar rules but the first letter is capitalized. So you can see that person is a class very quickly and first name is a variable because I have followed standard naming conventions. Let's revisit the UML class diagram to remind ourselves of what we need to do next. 
In general, a class diagram is a blueprint for what we want to create. So we can see that, so far, we have created three of the items on our list. The first name, the last name field, and the hourly rate field. Next, let's work on the constructors. As you can see, we have two constructors. One called person, that takes no arguments. The second called person, that takes two strings and a double. The first one will be our default constructor, which will use to initialize our field variables to default values. The second one will allow someone who uses the class to actually enter in values for the first name, last name, and hourly rate as soon as they begin creating an object of the person class. Back in Eclipse we see that we've got our class with our three fields declared. Let's look at a nice feature of Eclipse that will let us create a constructor very quickly. Click on the source menu. Notice that there are four or five or six lines down the source menu that start with the word generate. Generate getters and setters and so forth. Let's select the one that says generate constructor using fields. These code generation features let us create very quickly some of the the most common elements of a Java class by simply filling out a form. We can use this one to create a constructor using fields or if we deselect them all make a constructor that does not use the fields. Let's do this one first. This will be our default constructor. I'm going to deselect them all. I'm going to check my insertion point so that I put it where I want in the class. In this case it will be after my la hourly rate or I can also click here and just say put it after the last member. I generally find this to be safest because I do things in a certain order. I know it's going to be at the end of the class. But if you forget something and want to put it, you can choose exactly where you want from this list. We'll leave everything else default. Always check on these forms though to make sure that's what you want in any particular case. Once you've got the form filled out, hit OK. Notice it's created some code for us. It added some comments and Eclipse has also created the stub for our default constructor. As I mentioned, I'm going to simply use this constructor to set default values for my field level variables. Let's start by typing the word this. This is a keyword that refers to this Java class. Right after the word this, hit the period. Another nice feature of Eclipse is once you have an object that can be identified, if you hit dot or period, Eclipse will look ahead and it will try to figure out what you want next and it will pop up a menu that will show you the, the options that you have. In this case, notice my fields are the first three items on the list. So I'm going to highlight first name, double click it, and it pops up into the space there. And now I can do equal, let's say John, do the same thing for last name. This period, select last name from the list, equals do. Now you got to be careful with the period. If you keep typing this dot last name, you'll probably pass by the menu very quickly without seeing it. So it's up to you whether you want to utilize that function. It's usually best to hit the period and then pause. I think to reduce errors it's better to use the menu because you know that you're going to have exactly what was declared in your variable declaration statement above without any mistyping. We'll get the hourly rate and let's set that to ten dollars. Okay, very quickly our first constructor has been created. Let's use the same feature to construct or to create our second constructor. So this time pick generate constructor using fields. This time however let's leave all of our fields 
checked. Everything else, we'll double check those. Let's make it the last member come at the end. Public, all of these. And then let's select OK. Now we're cooking. Look at this constructor. All the lines have been created for us. If somebody uses this constructor, they will provide the first name, the last name, and hourly rate as inputs to the constructor. And then the lines for setting our field variables will set the field variable equal to the values that were passed in through the method calls. Just a reminder, having two or more methods with the same method name as we do with these constructors, this is called overloading in Java terminology. At the moment we have a significant amount of text in our class, so one thing I like to frequently do is to simply click on the save button in the icon bar in order to uh, make sure it's saved. This is something you should just frequently get in the habit of doing. Every once in a while, add a little bit of code, then save. Let's have a quick look at our UML class diagram again. Now we have five items created. Let's work on the getters and the setters for our person class. Back in Eclipse, you might recall that when we went to the source menu, there were a number of generate options and one of those was generate getters and setters. Let's use that to create at one fell swoop the getters and setters for all of our class level field variables. Click on generate getters and setters. Note that you can select all of them. You can deselect all. You can select just a get for a particular field or if you hit the top level in the hierarchy you can select the, both the get and the set for a particular field. I'm going to select all, double check the insertion point. I prefer to have fields and getter setter pairs so for instance get first name and set first name will be together in my class. You have other options you can do all the getters together and all the setters together if you prefer. These will be public. I'll generate method comments even though at this point I may not enter many comments. Then I'm going to hit OK. So click OK and watch what happens to the person.java file that you're creating. Look at that. Very quickly by selecting a menu option filling out the form, we've created very basic getters and setters for our class. This means that basically we have only two more methods to create to finish the person class. Another quick look at our UML class diagram and we see that we're almost finished. We still have left the get payment method and the two string. I'm going to skip to this two string because we have yet one more generate that we could use to create the two string. And then we'll work on the get payment. So back in Eclipse, click on source, go to generate, and this time pick two string. The two string method is generally a method that you can use to, if, if called, it will return a string that shows the name of the class and the current state of the class, meaning the variable values of the fields. You can have it show much more if you select those, but I'm going to just select the fields, make sure it's inserted at the last member, generate some comments. I'll take the default string format. You can actually format that any way you want. We'll code style string concatenation. It changes what is generated. Play around with that if you'd like to see it in another way and I'll keep the defaults for everything else. Click OK and now you see that a toString method. When toString is called, a string that shows what the current values of first name, hourly rate, and last name will be provided. 
we'll use that in our, our main method in a little while. Finally, I have one more method to create. This is our get payment method. For the get payment method, I will have to provide a number of hours as an integer and then I will return the payment as a double. This is the only method in this class that I'm actually going to have to type. Public double get payment int I'll call it hours because we're going to provide hours. Okay. Notice that at the moment I have an error. Although I'm quite confident in the code as it's written. Let's see what the error message says. Recall that you put the cursor over top of either the underlined portion or over in the margin. You can point to what's there. And you'll see that this method must return a result of type double. Also, you notice there are quick fixes available. This error, of course, is because I have not yet written a return statement, and in my me method stub, I have shown that I need to return something that is going to be double. So when I put the cursor over the error message, if I want to use one of the quick fixes, you have to be careful and know what they are, but eventually you learn that certain errors there are often a list of things you can do to correct it once you know what needs to be done at that point add a return statement or change return to void you can intelligently pick between that list double click on add return statement look at that it placed a return statement in my method the error is gone now this return statement is not exactly what I need and here is one of the dangers of choosing from that list. Eclipse will kind of try to assume that you need to return something it knows about and in this method the only local variable that it knows is the hours that you've declared as an argument for the method. So it assumes that the thing you want to return is the only thing it knows about called hours. But this is incorrect. I need to calculate a payment. Let's clean up a couple spaces here and let's change. Let's take out hours. Our hours are basically going to be, what we're going to return is basically going to be the hourly rate. Remember I can hit this dot and then choose hourly rate times the hours. This will multiply hourly rate times hours and return that result. Now anytime someone calls get payment, they provide how many hours and you'll get the amount of payment for the week. Click on save to save our person class. One last look at our UML class diagram shows us that to run our project we need to create a payment class. Inside the payment class we'll create a main method. A main method is required by all Java programs. This is where when you just say run for the program it's the code in the main method that will run to get it started. So once again let's get to Eclipse and let's start creating our main class. Right click on the folder we're going to put the class in, select new, then class. We're going to name this class payment. Double check everything. We're going to take the defaults for pretty much everything else on this form except let's select public static void main in order to make sure that the main is generated. Do that and hit finish. payment was created and it created a stub for our method called main. The to do comment is pretty nice. There's a feature in Eclipse I'll show you later but it will look at any comment called to do and we'll have a nice to do list we can see in one of the tabbed areas at the bottom. For now let's just erase that comment and let's do something that we might like to work with with person. 
I'm simply going to create a person object I'll use the default constructor for this one. If I do that, I'll want to set a first name. Notice I hit dot after typing person, and I can then type a letter if I want to narrow the field of what's listed and then I see I can set last name. Finally, I can set the hourly rate. Let's just make that $10 per hour. I'm going to basically want to just create a person object and print results to the console. The console is the area at the bottom of your Eclipse perspective, and this will show you a basic output of your program. To do that, I would use the system.out.print line. The default out for your Java classes in Eclipse is the console at the bottom of the Eclipse perspective. Well, let's see that my class has been created correctly by calling the to string and printing that out. Let's also print the required payment if Victor has worked 40 hours for the week. To do that, system dot o for out selected from the menu dot print line We'll call the get payment method and we'll pass in 40 hours. Very basic program, but we've made something that will actually work and show us some output. When I run this program, it's going to look for a main method. In the main method, we will create a person object print the state of the current person object to the console. We will then get and print the 40-hour weekly payment to the console. I'm going to hit save. To run this project, right-click on employee payment in the package explorer. From the menu, select Run As, and this is a Java application, so select that from the pop-up menu. You should have noticed down in the corner an indication that it was running, and then when it completed running, in the console we now see the results. Recall that Victor has $10 per hour payment, and he has worked 40 hours for this week, so the payment is $400. For more information about how to build Java Applications Eclipse, please look at the following references. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. Background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy Production.